the 3rd of February, 1947, Hamburg, Germany. The former staff of Ravensbrück, the largest concentration camp for women in Nazi Germany, hears their sentences read. After almost two months of gruesome testimonies, the world finally learns the truth about the inhumane mistreatment and torture conducted by the camp's male and female personnel during the camp's six-year existence. Out of 16 defendants, 11 are sentenced to death by hanging. One of them is Vera Zalvaquat. Vera Zalvaquat was born on the 26th of November, 1919, in Ochnitsch, then part of Czechoslovakia. While Vera's mother was a Czech, her adopted father was a Sudeten German, which was a name for ethnic Germans living in Czechoslovakia. Soon after Vera was born, the family emigrated to Germany. In 1933, Adolf Hitler and his Nazi party came into power and Germany became a dictatorship. The Nazi regime quickly began to restrict the civil and human rights of the Jewish people. And less than two months after Hitler became the chancellor, the first concentration camp, Dachau, was established in March 1933. On the 15th of September 1935, the Nazi regime announced two new laws. The Reich Citizenship Law, which declared that only Aryans could be citizens of the Reich, and the Law for the Protection of German Blood and Honor, which forbade marriages and extramarital sexual relations between Germans and Jews, the employment of German maids under the age of 45 in Jewish homes, and the raising of the German flag by Jews. These laws became known as the Nuremberg Laws, or Nuremberg Race Laws, and were the legal basis for the racist anti-Jewish policy in Germany. Thirteen additional decrees were added to the Nuremberg Laws over the next eight years. These included the first official definition of who was to be considered a Jew and who an Aryan. Jews with three or four Jewish grandparents were considered full-blooded Jews. During this time, Zalvaquart completed her training to become a nurse and then studied medicine for two semesters. The Second World War started on the 1st of September 1939 with the invasion of Poland. In May 1941, Vera Zalvaquart was first arrested by the Gestapo for having a relationship with a Jewish man, which was punishable under the Nuremberg race laws and for refusing to disclose his whereabouts. As punishment, she served 10 months in Flossenburg concentration camp. Flossenburg's original purpose was to exploit the forced labor of prisoners for the production of granite for Nazi construction projects. Until mid-1943, the quarry occupied the labor of about half of the prisoner population. However, in 1943, the camp became a key supplier of Messerschmitt BF-109 aircraft parts. In May 1942, Zalvaquart was arrested again for another relationship with a Jew. This time, she received a two-year prison sentence. After a short period of freedom, she was arrested for a third time in November 1944, together with her Jewish lover and his sister. After a short detention in the Theresienstadt concentration camp, located in the Protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia, Zalvaquart was sent to the Ravensbrück concentration camp in December 1944. Ravensbrück, opened in May 1939, was the only major women's camp established by the Nazis. Starting in the summer of 1942, SS medical doctors subjected nearly 80 Polish female prisoners at Ravensbrück to unethical medical experiments. SS doctors experimented with treating wounds with various chemical substances such as sulfonamide to prevent infections. They also tested various methods of setting and transplanting bones. Such experiments even included amputations. SS doctors, such as Hertha Orbehäuser, also carried out forced abortions of women who were already seven or eight months pregnant and sterilization experiments on women and children, many of them Roma, in an attempt to develop an efficient method of sterilization. In total, some 132,000 women from all over Europe passed through the camp, including Poles, Russians, Jews, Gypsies, and others. Of that number, over 92,000 women perished. Ravensbrück was staffed both by SS men, who served as guards and administrators, and by 150 women, who served as supervisors. These female supervisors were either SS volunteers, or women who had taken the job for the good pay and working conditions. Ravensbrück also housed a training camp for female SS guards, who were trained here how to handle the prisoners that they were going to supervise. 
The SS guards were able to dominate and control the camp's large population with the help of the Kapos. The Kapos were prisoners in the Nazi camps who were selected by the SS to supervise the other camp inmates. The Kapos received better food, clothing and housing, and had a reputation of brutal supervisors, beating, denouncing and even killing their fellow prisoners. One such Kapo was Vera Zalvaquat, who also served as a nurse due to her professional training. As a nurse, she participated in the gassing of women and children, removing gold teeth and crowns from murdered victims, and completing death certificates. From February 1945, she took a direct part in the extermination of prisoners in the camp's hospital, giving them, together with the SS men, poisonous white powder. Prisoners who took the powder or received an injection under the pretext of giving them strength before transport soon fell into a heavy sleep, and after some time, they stopped breathing. Allegedly, Zalvaquat and her fellow Nazi colleagues used to poison the innocent sick people to avoid the effort of having to transport them to the gas chambers. On the one hand, Zalvaquat murdered, but at the same time, she saved other prisoners by giving them hot tea and food, as well as releasing them from roll calls that could last for hours. She also saved some women and children from death by substituting their camp identification number with that of those already dead. After the end of the war, Vera Zelvaquat was first temporarily housed in an American camp, and then for some time, she lived in Hofheim am Taunus under the false name Anna Markova, and worked there as a manager in an office for racially persecuted people. However, the job ended very quickly. After the allegations of embezzlement, Zalvaquat fled to Cologne, where she was arrested by the British Army. Vera Zalvaquat, who had been on the British Army's wanted list for a long time, was then brought to the civil internment camp in paderborn Staumüller. She was then tried at the first Ravensbrück trial, which began on the 5th of December, 1946. During the court proceedings, Selvaquart claimed that her activity had only been limited to filling out death certificates. She also described how she had saved some women and children from death by substituting their camp identification number with that of those who had already died. She also claimed to have hidden one infant and had male prisoners bring him food and milk. According to Selvaquart's testimony, the existence of the baby became known in the camp. And when Ruth Neudeck, one of the camp's guards, found out about the child's existence, she took the child away from Zalvaquat and threw it on the dirty food wagon like a parcel of cloth, saying, A little Jew will be a very big Jew one day. The child was later killed. Zalvaquat claimed that after this she had tried to poison Neudeck, when on one occasion she came to Zalvaquat complaining of a headache and asking for medicine. But Neudeck took too little of the white powder to kill her. Zalvaquat also said that the SS had threatened to send her to the gas chambers, but because she had helped prisoners so much, several male prisoners disguised her as a male inmate to save her life, and this guise she kept until the end of the war. However, numerous witnesses questioned the credibility of her statements. On the 3rd of February 1947, the British Military Tribunal sentenced Vera Zalvaquat to death by hanging. However, Zalvaquat asked for a pardon claiming that she had stolen the schematics for the V-2 missiles produced at Ravensbrück prior to 1944 for smuggling it to the British. The execution of the sentence was temporarily postponed while this was taken into consideration, and the remaining defendants sentenced to death were hanged on the 2nd and 3rd of May 1947. If Zalvaquat had hoped that her life would be saved, she was wrong. Her request was rejected. Vera Zalvaquat was 27 years old when the British executioner Albert Pierpoint carried out the sentence on the 26th of June, 1947. Shortly after, her body was buried with the other executed war criminals at Veal Cemetery in Hameln. There were no tears shed for Vera Zalvaquat. Thanks for watching the World History Channel and don't miss our next videos. Click the subscribe button now for more interesting clips, give us a like and see you in the following episode.